Here's a problem having to do with a PN junction from the chapter 7 of the book by Neiman. As usual, stop the video, read through the problem, see if you can work it out yourself before continuing. We've got the maximum electric field in the junction, the doping concentrations on each side, and we're asked to find the reverse bias voltage, that's VR. So that's our target variable. To get started, it might help to remind yourself what a PN junction looks like. The doping is fairly straightforward, but this E max is the maximum electric field in the junction. What controls that, and how is it related to what we're looking for, the reverse bias voltage? Let's take a moment to review some of the physics of the PN junction. So I've drawn here a PN junction, P side on the left, N side on the right cross-sectional area A. There's a depletion region near the center of the junction where it's clear that some of the electrons have been recombined with holes so that the left side of the depletion region, the holes have been removed and so I'm left with the negative acceptor ions on the P side and on the N side I've lost some electrons and I'm left with the positive donor ions. Some things that are useful to remember about the PN junction is that it's a charge neutral. So that means that the total charge exposed on the left side is equal to the total charge exposed on the right side. The thing started out neutral. I lost electrons and holes in pairs. So every time I lost an electron, I also lost a hole exposing one donor ion and one acceptor ion. So the total charge on the left side, magnitude, which is negative, has got to be equal to the total charge on the right side. What's the total charge on the left side? It's the charge density. So the density of charges depends on the number of acceptor ions times the volume of that exposed region there. And that volume is going to be the area times xp. <clears throat> and then the same thing goes on the right side, except then instead of Na, I have Nd times A times Xn. Again, this is the charge density in that region, the depletion region, and this is the volume of the depletion region on the left side, and the same thing on this side. This is the charge density. And this is the volume. You can see that this simplifies because the E's cancel and the A's cancel and I'm left with this useful relationship which is really worth remembering XP times NA is equal to XN times ND. A second thing that's useful to remember about the PN junction is that the E field can be calculated assuming parallel plates. So for example, if I'm sitting in the middle of this junction right here, this drawing is not to scale. The junction is very, very narrow. And so if I'm sitting in the middle of the junction, I see a huge wall of charge to the left of me and a huge wall of charge to the right of me. So what I can reduce that to, if I want to know E max, the field at the center of that junction, is I can treat it like a parallel plate where a negative plate to the left of me with charge QL and a positive charge to the right of me with charge QR. And we know that those charges are the same because the whole thing is neutral. And then there's an electric field in the middle here, which we're calling E max. You can calculate E max because you know the field from a, between two plates of charge. Maybe you remember that the electric field in between these two plates looks like this, sigma over epsilon naught. That's if it's in vacuum, but if it's in material like this, you have to put in here a dielectric constant, which tells you about the properties of the material. And sigma is the charge per area, so that's Q 
let's just say q left, it doesn't matter. I could have either q left or q right because they're the same over kappa epsilon naught. And maybe I'll put here a positive value number because my I'm just looking for the magnitude divided by a sorry I forgot the area but I know q left from what I did up here in part one so I can substitute this in q left is e n a a x p the denominator is a kappa epsilon naught and you get some cancellation here the a's cancel and so I get E max is E and A XP over kappa epsilon naught. But I can write that in another way because I know that NA XP is equal to ND times XN according to this equation. So all in all I get E max can be written in two ways either E NA xp over kappa epsilon naught, or I can write it e and d xn over kappa epsilon naught. Either one is okay. Those relationships will be useful for us um, when we're solving this problem. A third thing to remember about the PN junction is how to relate the electric potential. Remember, we're looking for VR. How do we relate the electric potential to the things we know, the doping in the electric field? Remember that when you have a big change in an electric potential, you have a big electric field. So the electric field is related to the change in the electric potential. And if you want to put that into math, it looks like this. E is equal to dv dx. So the derivative of the electric potential gives me the electric field. If I want to get the electric potential in terms of the electric field, I have to undo this derivative, I get an integral. So my electric potential delta V is basically like an integral uh, E dotted with dx. Now in this problem, I want to know the electric potential, the total electric potential between the two sides of the junction, xp and xn. So I need to do this integral, which looks hard, but in fact, the integral is just the area under the curve. So I need the area under here and the area under here. So this is going to be equal to the area under the curve. And that's easy because those are just triangles. So we can write down the base, one half the base times the height. The area of the blue triangle is one half xp times e max. And the area of the green triangle is one half xn times e max. This is uh, what I'm going to call delta v total, total electric potential between the two sides. Okay. And if you're worried about the signs, notice that I put the absolute value sign. So I just want to know the positive number, the magnitude of the electric potential difference between the two sides. So I want everything on the right side to be positive. This is positive because it's the magnitude of a vector, and xp and xn are positive. So I'm not being kind of cavalier about the signs, just because I want to know the magnitude of the electric potential between the two sides. This total electric potential difference has two sources. It has a built-in potential difference, VBI plus VR. Okay. So there's a built-in potential difference. And then if I bias this device, I also have a reverse bias voltage is equal to 1 half. Let me clean this up a little bit, E max times Xn plus Xp. And that is just the width, so E max times W. So those three things are really going to be the, the key points to kind of get started with this problem. So there's a little bit of a review of the theory of the PN junction deriving those three important relationships. So let's plan the solution. How are we going to do this? You see we have the formula for it has VR here. That's what we're trying to find. 
Now there's two problems. I don't know W and I don't know XN and XP and I also don't know VBI. But I've got some more information here. For example, if I look up at these equations, number two, I notice that here I know everything except for XP, right? So I can get XP and XN from these equations. So let's start there. We'll determine Xn and Xp from equations 1 and 2. Once I have those, I can substitute that into 3, sub into 3. So then I will know Xp and Xn. So basically the whole right hand side here would be known. And then I could get Vr if I only could get Vbi. So then we're also going to need to to get VBI from the standard equation for VBI. It looks like this, KBT over E, natural log of ND NA over NI squared. And then once I have that, I would know everything in this equation except for VR, so I would solve for VR. So there's the plan. I've got to combine all this information together and to get one equation which has everything I know in it except for VR. Okay, so let's try to execute the plan. I try to give myself a little bit more space here. So determine Xn and Xp from 1 and 2. So let's do uh, from number 2, I get I can solve this for xp is equal to emax times kappa epsilon naught over e times na. And then similarly, I can get xn by using either one or solving the second relation from two, and that's going to look as follows, just like that. So I have all those things, right? I'm, I know Xn and Xp because I know everything on the right-hand side of that equation. So I'll now, but remember, we're solving this algebraically, so I'll substitute these in to 3. So let's take 3, sub in. Okay. Let me try to go a little quickly here. Looks like that. I just took xn and xp and substituted them directly into that formula and we can simplify this a little bit. So let's pull out all the common factors. I've got an emax squared. I've got a kappa epsilon naught over e and then I've got in here 1 over na plus 1 over nd. Okay. This is equal to vr plus vbi. Now I know everything here. Finally, the last thing I have to do is substitute in for VBI using this equation here, and then we need to subtract it over to the other side. And it looks like that. So all I did is I took this piece here. This is VBI. So I took this and put it onto the other side and then substitute it in the formula for VBI. Now everything in this formula I know, right? I have an algebraic formula for the reverse bias voltage in terms of everything given in the problem. Emax I know, kappa I know because it's silicon, epsilon naught is a constant, I know Na and Md, and the temperature, well again, is not given, so I'm gonna assume room temperature. So let's assume room temperature. So now all we have to do is substitute the numbers. All right, so now let's substitute all the numbers in with the units, and then we'll check the units. 
Okay, so let's check the units. I plugged in all the numbers here. Notice I plugged in 11.7 for the dielectric constant of silicon. Uh, epsilon naught is a constant. And then I used here assumed room temperature for KBT. So 0.026 EV is the usual value of KT at room temperature. All right, let's check the units. What are the units of VR? Well, it better be volts, right? All right, the first term, I've got volts squared per centimeter squared. And then I've got E divided by volts times centimeters over E, right? And then I've got these big brackets which gives me 1 over centimeters to the minus 3, so that's centimeters cubed. Okay. And then the second term, I've just got EV over E. And the natural log, everything inside of the natural log has no units, which is correct. So let's just check this first term here. What do I have? I've got volts squared on the top and a volts on the bottom, so those cancel. And I've got an E on the top and an E on the bottom, so those cancel. So what I've got here is a volts on the top over centimeters squared. And then I've got one over centimeter on the top there. And then I've got a centimeter cubed there. And you can see that all the centimeters cancel. So this cancels with those. And so the, the units of the first term are volts. The units of the second term are volts. So the two terms have the same units, and they're both volts, so it's good. The units make sense. Now you've got to plug everything into your calculator. And when I do that, when I do that, I get 72.6 volts. So there's the answer that we get from everything all together. If you want to do it one piece at a time, I got this term here was really not important. This turned out to be only about minus 0.77 volts. So the, the first term is the big one. It's about 73 volts. And then this second term was just a small correction to that. So there's the answer to our problem. We did some reviewing of the PN junction and then some practice doing some algebra, combining the equations together and plugging the numbers and checking the units. In terms of any additional checking you can do, I can't think of anything besides checking the units and also the sign. So notice we came out with a positive number here, which is good. Uh, it would be weird if we had gotten a negative number for the reverse bias voltage. I'm not sure what that would mean. It would mean it was forward bias, which would be a sign that something was wrong. So the sign makes sense, and so that's good, and the units make sense. So that's going to be the answer to this problem.